In the 40th millennium, mankind faces threats unimaginable. Be it the corrupting influence of chaos, foul alien Xenos, or even ancient monstrosities from beyond the galaxy, the largest and most wasteful threat mankind faces is its own bureaucracy. Orders get crossed, agendas are played against each other, loyalist fights loyalist, both believing the Emperor is on their side and will hear their prayers for his divine protection. Astartes versus Militarum, Marines versus Guard, this is 40K in 40 minutes. Greetings 40K fans, JT McDowell here from Play on Tabletop with episode three of season three and it promises to be an absolute barn burner of a match. We are incredibly pleased to have the War Mistress, Tanya Gates, in studio today to play her beautifully painted Astra Militarum. She will be squaring off against Space Marine Steve in his newly minted Astral Claw Space Marines, courtesy of Sea Studios. This episode is brought to you by Vanguard Tactics, the one and only Warhammer 40k education program designed to help guide you on your way to becoming a better Warhammer player. Don't just take my word for it though, Here's the man himself, Stephen Box, from the channel Vanguard Tactics. Hey, I'm Stephen from Vanguard Tactics, and we created Vanguard Tactics to help improve everybody that loves 40K's ability at the game, give them confidence at the tabletop, help them with a little bit of clarity, and also really to maximize their enjoyment from the hobby. We've become the ambassadors for sportsmanship and fair play, and Steve has been one of our students for some time now, and I cannot wait to see what he can achieve in today's battle report. Steven has set up a free 40k masterclass for you to check it out. The link for that is in the description below. Thanks, Steven. My name is Tanya. Uh, some people know me as the War Mistress everywhere. So Twitch, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere. And I'm playing 1500 points of Astra Militarum today. She is a regular with Scari on the Just Put Paint On It live stream. As mentioned, has her own podcast and large Instagram following. And she's a member of the Forge The Narrative podcast crew. I haven't had the joy of playing him yet, but I have seen his atrocious dice rolls on the channel before, so I feel like my odds are probably pretty good. <laughs> Today she brings a battalion and armored spearhead to do battle in the name of the Emperor. Her forces consist of two company commanders and five guard squads, a tank commander Lehman Russ execution, or plasma executioner as it's affectionately known, a punisher Lehman Russ, Bulgren and a chimera, a hellhound, a magicor, a basilisk, a scout sentinel, and a cyclops demolition vehicle. I am the Space Marine Steve from Play on Tabletop, and I am so very excited to be playing my first game of season three. Steve is bringing to the table his brand new Astro Claws commissioned from C Studio. I've been training, I've been studying, I got a hold of Siege Studios to paint me a beautiful army, and I've been talking to the people at Vanguard Tactics to help me play just that little bit better. This is definitely the year of Steve, and if it isn't, he has a Librarian in Phobos armor and a Reaver Lieutenant as well as a Relic Shield Captain with the Burning Blade. Four squads of Intercessors, all with Auto Bolt Rifles and Power Fist Sergeants. A Redemptor Dreadnought with Rocket Pod, Plasma Incinerator and Gatling Cannon. A squad of Reavers with Gravital Launchers, five Hellblasters, two Melta Armed Invader ATVs in a squad and an Impulsor Transport. Our mission today is Surround and Destroy from the GT 2020 Rulebook. Six objectives are placed on a Dawn of War style deployment map. Players will score five for holding one, five for holding two, and five more for holding more objectives than their opponent to a maximum of 15 per turn and 45 for the game. Looks like Steve is gonna deploy first, so let's go over the secondaries the players have chosen. Steve has taken Bring It Down, scoring victory points for destroying Tanya's vehicles, and Guard have a lot of those for sure. Well, first of all, bring it down. It's a bit of a no-brainer and a fantastic choice. Tanya's got so many vehicles in her list, I think it really makes sense to just focus on bringing those down. He's taken Deploy Scramblers as well, needing to perform that action in his own zone, No Man's Land, and Tanya's zone to score 10 points total. It's an all or nothing. Do it three times or you don't get anything. Now this is a huge gamble. Typically Scrambles is a good pick, but Tanya's got so many models, she can easily screen out her entire deployment zone up until turn three. 
it's going to be really difficult for Steve to bring those reavers on into Tanya's backfield so that he can get that scramble down. So instead, I would have really liked him to gone for Oaths of Moment, which is in the Space Marine Codex, which again resolves around having units within the center of the table, protecting that librarian, which would have done psychic ritual for him, and also couples really well with killing vehicles. He's also taken engage on all fronts. With his army's inherent want to be aggressive and push forward, that I think is a solid choice for him. Steven, what do you think about our Steve's choices here? It's a solid choice, but I think he's gonna have to be careful that he doesn't overstretch himself. Otherwise, if he keeps trying to push for that fourth quarter, he might find himself giving away too many units too fast. I would have really liked Steve to go for Psychic Ritual. Looking at Tanya's list, she doesn't have any way to deny, and that would have given a nice Psychic Ritual, 15 points, nice and clean, super simple. Awesome, thanks Steve. Tanya's also taken Engage, and she's also taken Raise Banners, two objectives that at first seem counterintuitive, but I'm sure she's got a plan. She's also taken Grind Them Down, scoring three points for killing more units per turn than Steve. That's an interesting choice here. She does have a lot of firepower, and weight of dice will definitely be in her favor, but three plus saves are sometimes hard to crack. Steve will begin deployment with 11 command points to Tanya's eight, as she has spent three of her starting 11 on Tank Ace for her Plasma Cutioner, and one more each on her Basilisk and Manticore for full payload. Steve has chosen to strategically reserve his Redemptor Dreadnought for two command points, taking him down to nine to start the game. Guards are so cool. I must say I really enjoy that you have color-coded them. That's for me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's for me and for all of us. Hey. <laughs> Steve has definitely spread out his forces a little bit here in this Dawn of War deployment. However, he does have that Ultramarine redeploy available, and that's something Tanya should be concerned with. And the Impulsor in it has the Hellblaster unit and my uh, Warlord. Um, so this is the Chimera that has my Bulgrin inside. Yeah. Tanya has screened her tanks as expected and given herself some decent firing lanes here. I expect her guns to open up and just level some Space Marines for as long as possible. Let's see the roll to go first. I would like to go second. <laughs> I would also like to go second. I got one. Oh. <laughs> yes, this is six. <laughs> Excellent! Come at me, bro! I don't wanna. I like her too. I like her, I like her too, but she's wise cracking a lot. Before the turn starts here, Steve spends two command points to redeploy, as Astral Claws are an Ultramarine successor chapter, and as such have access to their stratagems. He looks to be overloading Tanya's left flank, and I bet that Medusa and Plasma Kushner Lehman Russ have him a bit scared. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes after them right now. That's going to take him to seven command points, but immediately he's going to gain one in his command phase to go to eight to start his turn. And then I get to start playing the game. Uh, so the Hellblasters with the Assault Plasma Incinerators are going to hop out uh, here. Is that an Impulsor thing? Yeah, so yeah. Impulsors, after it makes a normal move, mm -hmm. the guys inside can hop out, but those guys cannot charge. The Hellblasters are going to deploy Scramblers in the middle. Okay. I know that's weird, but there's a stratagem that lets them shoot anyway right you, now. Do you know what that is? What? Space Marine Jank. It is Space Marine Jank. Yeah. I didn't get quite everything that I wanted, but I think I'm going to move to my Psychic Phase. Okay. So in my Psychic Phase, mm -hmm. my Librarian is going to Shrouding um, the unit of uh, re Reavers. Okay. And then they're going, he's, they're going to Temporal Corridor 
That's you. The unit cannot shoot or fight this turn. Okay. So that's okay. The whole point is keeping them alive. Okay. Uh, so then we go to my shooting phase. Here come the Primaris Marines. Steve's spending two command points here on uncompromising fire, and that's going to allow him to perform an action with that unit and still shoot. I really love these force multiplier stratagems. Being able to do all the things sure does make this game a bit easier. That said, it does take him down to six command points remaining. He's managed to deploy scramblers in the mid table, however, so that's a good start for him. Oh, come on, baby. Let's do this. Bunch of hits, so six hits so far. Oh, all hit. This is the year of Steve. So on fours. Come on. We missed one. Whoa. 22 down. Okay. Ooh, down goes that Metacore. It seems he singled that model out for sure, and he scored two Bring It Down points for it, but he hasn't killed much else. He set himself up for a solid push into those tanks turn two if he can survive that incoming fuselage. Five up. Dead, dead. Dead, dead. Iron Hail Heavy Stubber is a heavy four. Three on threes. Uh, so two wounds at AP minus two because I'm in the Devastator Doctor. I got it. Super lucky on those Hell Blasters. It's a pretty quick turn for Steve. He scored two for Bring It Down and two for Engage at All Fronts, and he's still sitting at six command points. Start of Tanya's turn, she's up to nine command points and has a lot of Marines on her doorstep. So, and I'm only gonna move half of my range. So you get the double tap on the cannon. Yeah. Tanya's movement phase, and she's looking to take up a lot of board space, setting up some speed bumps, it looks like, for those Marines. That redeploy has her a little bit out of position here, but with her tank's range, it's not as much as you think. So the yellow squad is going to do banners and green guys are going to do banners. Okay, sounds good. So in the orders phase, the tank commander is going to tell himself to reroll once. You are within rapid fire of a few of them, so he's going to tell them to first ring fire, second ring fire. Okay. So now I'm going to start shooting. Okay. Um, and I'm going to start with the stuff that Sentinel is going to go into what? The intercessors. Intercessors. Sounds good. D6. Number of shots. Six. So six. I told you, this thing's a rock star. <laughs> six auto hits. On four. Threes. Star watch. It kills one and a half dudes. Oh, no. Front dude, oh, which is the sergeant. No. I wasn't expecting that at all. So this guy is going to overcharge. Yeah. And he's going to dump everything into. The plasma executioner is opening up on those hell blasters. They really need to be gone as they annihilated that Manticore last turn. Steve's responding by spending a command point on transhuman physiology to make it harder to wound those marines, and that's going to take him down to five. The main cannon is 2d6, mm -hmm. so that is 10 shots. Yes, you do. That's a lot of hits. Oh no. Um, Ouch. So normally, though, this would be wounding you on twos, but it's going to be wounding you on fours, because you're transhuman. Yeah, and I'm hopeful that it's not a lot. It's five. So I need sixes, and I need a lot of them. Oh, snap! I got three sixes. It's okay, I still have side sponsors. Well, don't, why? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that tank is nuts. Thank goodness for transhuman physiology, but hold on, the sponsons have landed more hits, and that's more dead Marines. These hell blasters are taking an absolute beating. Oh, she's rolling hot with the black dice. That's okay, I still have two Hell Blasters left. That's okay, I still have a Heavy Bolter. Oh, come on. <sighs> Threes, reroll ones. Four up, of which I don't make. I'm gonna go to four CP and I'm gonna reroll that. I do make it, so I have two Hell Blasters still alive. Two, three, four, five, six, which are first rank fire, second rank fire, and rapid fire. So that's gonna be 24 shots. I need fours. Here we go. And I need fives. Three, minus nothing. Here we go, come on. Uh, so I'm good. So the Basilisk is gonna go in. I'm gonna hit on force, no rerolls or anything. Transhuman. Transhuman. Two. Two wounds? At minus three. Oh, sixes. Uh, oh, oh, one of them lives! Oh man, these Hell Blasters, they just don't wanna quit. Um, and my Heavy Bolter is gonna go in. Hitting on force. Here we go. All of them. Force. One. Death. 
No. Yeah, they're okay. Reavers, okay, yeah. I'm gonna shoot the reavers. reavers. So I'm gonna have 22 shots into them. Force. Here we go. Just two extra. Show us how it's done. So five. You can five. kill a guy here. Reavers. Let's see it. You kill a guy and a half. <laughs> So we're gonna shoot the Cyclops. Yes! Into the Reavers. Oh no, it's awesome. Here comes that Cyclops demolition vehicle. Let's see if it can wipe a unit. And it needs to right now, as we are even for kills. I think Tanya may have forgotten about her grind them down secondary here, though stopping the Marine advance is a calculated trade-off for sure. So it ices this first guy, uh, and then you roll D3 for the next guy. Oh, come on, baby. Using a reroll to go to eight command points, and oh no, she has failed to wipe that unit. That is not what she wanted at all. With the destruction of that Cyclops demolition vehicle, that's gonna give Steve another bring it down point, and that's gonna make our end of one score five nothing in favor of Steve. Tanya has managed to raise two banners this turn, but won't score those until the second turn. I think here though, what I have to do is I have to channel my inner Steven box. Do I have an inner Steven box? <laughs> Actually, you know what though? People do mistake us for the same person <laughs> from time to time. Here's how you tell the difference, okay? One of us is hilarious, mm -hmm. and one of us is devilishly handsome. The other one is Steven Box. <laughs> 10 primary points and up to five command points here, and to start his movement phase, Steve's using tactical expertise as the tactical doctrine is active, and any six to wound for assault or rapid fire weapons will improve their armor penetration by one for that attack. Now I've gotta stop you from 15ing me. That's the number one thing. You're doing great, man. You're doing good. Well, thank you, thank you. Thank you. With all those heavy tanks about, and needing fives or sixes anyway to wound, it's not a bad use for sure. It's gonna leave with three command points, but he's also deployed scramblers in his own zone this turn. Lots and lots of advances here, really taking advantage of the Astral Claws rules for no penalty to shooting while advancing. So the Invader ATV is gonna go right there. Mm -hmm. Reserves are in, and that war suit needs to do some work for sure. Let's move right along to that sweet, sweet psychic phase. I'm gonna smite with the Librarian into the Purple Guardsman. Okay. Uh, I do, Yeah. with a minimum smite for three mortal wounds. <laughs> that was a good smite. That was a good smite. That's what Guardsmen are there for. So then I'll continue on to my shooting phase of which there's going to be some. Uh, Shocker. <laughs> shocking. <laughs> the Dreadnought is yeah. going to shoot like all of its weaponry. Oh. Uh, yeah, all of its weaponry into this all back right. unit. Ten of them. Threes. The Onslaught Catlin Cannon. Okay. It's on threes. Six. 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 I say one. Four more. Die. Two. Uh, the uh, Macroplasma Incinerator, minimum three. Okay. That's okay. There's one guy though back there. It's one guy. Oh no. Then my Reaver squad. Okay. He's gonna shoot into that lone guardsman. Oh, those poor, poor guardsmen. Flak armor just isn't enough. Yeah. Dead guy. These uh, four intercessors are gonna fire into the yellow squad of guardsmen. Okay. Here we go. Sixes. Oh. All right, you get two of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm gonna kill a few more, but all right, you know what, you live and you learn. This unit of intercessors yep. into the um, Hellhound. Come on. Three at AP minus two and two at AP minus one. Fours. Three damage, take yeah. one more. And then I'm hoping for the very same thing from this unit of intercessors all firing their audible rifles. Okay. Into the uh, Heckhound as well. Take one, four. So I take two more. Oh, perfect. So that puts me down to five. Uh, okay, so uh, moving over to my Invader ATV mm -hmm. with the Multi Melta. Mm -hmm. Looks like Steve's splitting fire here. He's really relying on those ATVs to be able to kill a tank on their own. As you all know, I'm never a fan of splitting fire. Kill it until it's dead is my motto. And there's no rerolls on that guy because he's not quite close enough to the captain. So one at AP minus one and two at AP minus two. Okay, so two just die, and then the other one needs a six up. She does not. No. 
And then uh, two shots into the Basilisk on threes. Uh, one hit, threes. Three damage to it. Goes down to eight. Okay. Um, my Invader ATV mm -hmm. is gonna fire its uh, auto bolt rifles into the Heck Hound, okay. and then its multi melta into the um, Executioner tank. Okay. D6 damage, big two. I will command point reroll that damage roll is what I'm gonna do. Okay. Into a three. Okay. We call it progress. Um, so six shots from the auto bolt rifle into the Heck Hound. Heck hound. Heck hound. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so one at AP minus two and one at AP minus one. Five. It's not good. And then the other one is a four. It's not good. Impulsor is going to fire everything into the red squad of guardsmen. So you are in rapid fire range of my storm bolters. Here we go. So three die. And then these guys need. How many are left there in the red spot? One. Steve's cleared his way to be able to assault, but he's committing a lot to press on those tanks. Oh, baby. He could keep it. Sixes. No. I saw a six. He could have done it. So then what we're going to do is we're going to head right into that charge phase. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the uh, Reaver squad, mm -hmm. and they're going to charge the purple squad. OK. Uh, five, 10, because I'm, uh, Astral Claws. Over here, uh, yeah, the captain charges the green squad. Uh, with a 10. Oh, what I really want is I want to up tax dancing lieutenant with a dancing captain. So I'm gonna, <laughs> so I'm gonna slay the guardsman and then stand there and take the executioner to the face and live dancing captain. Uh, and then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take this ulcer and I'm going to charge the chimera. Uh, five. Oh no, he's failed that charge. Is, is he re-rolling? He's down to one command point and he still fails. I don't know if I would have paid that there. Steven, what do you think of that move? Well, his instincts were correct to use that CP because if Steve would have made that charge, three things would have been likely to happen. Number one, he would have contested that objective and tied up both of those vehicles. Not only that, if he also makes that charge, it also means in Tanya's turn, she can't then make a charge onto those ATVs and stop them from shooting at whatever the target they want when we come back to Steve's turn. So I think on the whole, it was a really, really good play and spending that command point would have been absolutely vital to gain a little bit more ground. So Steve, top work on that one, but you were just very unlucky. Uh, the Reavers are gonna attack the purple squad there. You betcha. Uh, so, Sergeant. You get it. <laughs> Five ups. Here we go. I take two. Okay. And then uh, the captain takes all of his attacks, which is a lot of them, and just pummels them into the guardsman spot. So on two. Uh, four hits. Uh, so four dead dudes, because they okay. minus five. Rights of War uh, dishes out objective secure. So he actually has objective yeah. secure. Okay, the purple guys get to fight back. Oh boy! Hit on force. Here we go. Solid. Oh. Solid. <laughs> Looks like Space Marine Steve's managed to wipe some guardsmen out, but I don't know if that's enough of a trade off. There's some big old Bulgren ready to come at him. He's managed three more for engaged all fronts, combined with 10 primary for a current score of 18, but let's see how Tanya answers. Up to nine command points, as well as 10 for primary for Tanya the War Mistress, doing some jury rig repairs on her tanks from her custom doctrines to get some wounds back. She's definitely gonna get engaged at all fronts here as that wall of armor is pressing forward and the Bulgren are out and ready to do some Primaris thumping. Hey, wasn't that a band in the 80s? No, it was tough thumping. Never mind. <laughs> um, so that's where I'm actually going to start my shooting. Okay. So these guys, the purple squad is going to shoot into the Reavers. Totally. Hit on fours. I fail, and one of them does that. <laughs> uh, so I need fours. That's not missing one, any shots. Two. Oh no, one of them does take me. Heck I, yeah. I thought for sure, I was like, I'm losing at least one guy here. So I'm going to shred those dudes again. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, that Sentinel is way overperforming. That driver needs a promotion and a new name tag and maybe a desk job. He's doing all the work out there mid table. Um, so my heavy flamers are gonna go in here and okay. then the turret is gonna go in here. Just for everybody who's learning the game out there, remember not to do that if you wanna use it as a ruins. I got well, overzealous with my consolidates <laughs> and now I'm paying for it. Best thing about a hellhound is no rolls to hit. And if you don't kill it outright, it just shoots just as well absolutely roasting some marines. Okay, so the Punisher Gatling Cannon is firing its turret weapon into these reavers. Here comes the Punisher into the reavers. Oh my Lanta, 20 shots twice. It warms my Xenos loving heart to see someone else on the receiving end of that tank. Oh, Captain, my Captain, you're about to get a tank to the face. I'm just gonna shoot everything into it. I don't know I'm why you wouldn't. always overcharging. Yeah. yeah. Steve's spending a point on transhuman physiology to make that captain harder to wound. Yeah. Here we go. Four. All right. Three. Minus three. Four up in balls. Now we're just, now we're just, you know, playing dice. Please! Yo, oh, I failed two and he takes four. Oh no, my plan isn't working. It's got two left. Maybe I miscalculated all of this. Three's real ones. So I take one mortal wound. Oh no, it's happening. <laughs> Dancing captain. And then I need a four. Yes. Michael one Flatley, at... Lord of the Dance. <laughs> one at minus three. One at minus three. Do it. Yes! <laughs> three heavy bolters. Don't do it. Oh, I'm gonna do it. Don't do it. <gasps> <gasps> you miss them all? I got one. No. <sighs> Um, he's gonna. Oh, baby. Go over plasma. He's gonna overcharge his plasma. The pistol? Yeah. It better not be him. Oh, oh it's a two! Oh, no, yes. I'm gonna CP reroll. I'm gonna CP reroll. Oh, oh if, it's a one, a one? if it's a one and it slays your warlord, I'm gonna be just ecstatic. Oh, no. it's a six. Yes, okay. I'm fours. Don't wound. Don't wound. No. Yes! <laughs> ah, he lives. Michael Damn Flatley, it. Lord of the Dance. Damn and it. all the things Primaris. This is crazy. Like, I have never played, like, a game where luck has been on my side. Like, this is what it feels like to be tack. Two wounds left on that captain, and the Basilisk is gonna open up into him. But anyway, the, the Basilisk is gonna yeah, into, into him. him. Yeah, so roll two dice, pick the highest. But I can reroll the lowest for my regimental ability. Yeah, oh, it's four, okay. I'm so afraid, Tanya. <laughs> I want him to live. Reroll, no, no rerolls. Please live! Fours. <gasps> Is it only one? It's one. <gasps> However, fours. Oh, it's one. Oh, no. Minus three. It's a four up. It does it three, does three damage. damage. Okay. I don't have any more CP. This is what Bon Jovi meant when he said living on the prayer. <laughs> this is a 50-50 roll. We're just flipping coins now. <laughs> ah! Three heavy bolters. If we get, could get ever your, get the right get to live on a prayer. Get your filthy dice out of there. <laughs> this is Force. the year Steve. One more. Oh boy, he lives! How did he live through that? That's some serious artillery right to the noggin. I'm going to put my heavy flamers from the chimera into here. Ability? Five. Here we go. Uh, one. What is with these dice? Oh, I'm fine. My big flamer is going to go into that the invader uh, ATV invader, in the, 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 in the, far in the back one. here. The far one, okay. correct. Um, and then the small flamer is going to go into these intercessors. Okay, so I'll do the big one first. Kay. 2d6. Here we go. Here we are. Uh, two of them. Just one damage each. Uh, so it's six wounds remaining. And then my 1d6 flamer into those guys. Okay. Three shots. Never re-roll it if it's a three. You just always keep it. Don't get just greedy. Always... Uh, See, I do. I re-roll so it if it's a three. Three is. Uh, they're good. Okay. Uh, my company commander is going to charge in. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my yellow squad is going to charge this lone reaver. Okay. Oh, it's angry. 
Apache spending two command points, one on headfirst charge to give the Bulgren an extra two inches after they get out of a vehicle, and another on furious charge to do mortals on four pluses when they get stuck in. Let's start here and see what we can do. Here we go. He's on gonna threes. he's gonna hit on threes. Oh baby, with a power sword, no less. Whoops. Oh, the commander gets a wound through. That captain's down to one wound remaining and hanging on for dear life. So these guardsmen, they have ten attacks going into this lone reaver. Can they do it? He has one wound left. <laughs> yes, I hope they can. Hitting on fours. No, he makes it with a yeah, six. Yeah. He lives. Oh my god, these dice. Okay. I think I think maybe they can do it. Oh yeah. Although my rolling has been pretty terrible. So. Is it re -rap? Ooh, the Bulgren laid a real smackdown on there and beat up that ATV good, but the real fight we want to see is Captain on Commander. On twos. Okay. Mm hmm mm hmm Five AP minus fives. Okay. <laughs> and then I will consolidate. Oh. Oh yeah. Well, it's too late now. <laughs> no, no, it's not gonna happen. I have that's a two pretty, up. That's pretty much I have better. a I have a two up save. He hits on sixes. This is the right move. It's the tank's turn. It hits. It wounds. Oh no. No AP. You got this. You got this. <laughs> Can he save it? This could kill him! He does! The captain lives with a single wound! That is gonna cause some serious headaches for Tanya next turn. She's gonna score one for her banner, three for engage, and ten for primary to make our score at the end of two, 18 to 14, in favor of Steve. Fifteen primary points to start the turn for Steve, and he gains a command point. But he's pretty tied up right now, and he needs to be mindful of scoring that third deploy scramblers. If he runs out of infantry, he won't be able to do it. He's not falling back the ATV here as well, and I'm really rather surprised at that. Okay, so we're gonna go to my psychic phase. And in my psychic phase, my librarian is gonna smite the yellow squad of guardsmen. Mm -hmm. For three mortal wounds. Psychic phase, he's using shrouding on that reaver as he needs that single model. It's a smart play. Unless it's the closest model, it can't be targeted with ranged weapons. After that, the dreadnought is gonna fire all of its guns into the purple squad of guardsmen. They're gone? They're gone. Okay, so I will stop shooting its guns. So that shot, these gentlemen, mm -hmm. uh, they are gonna shoot into the sentinel. Okay. On five. Five? Good bed. So the first squad of intercessors will fire into the Heckhound. 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 Fours. Here we go. Good, bad. Good, bad. So then the same thing for the back squad can do it. Here we are. Feel a change in the winds. Uh, so I'm going to go to my charge phase. Uh, the lieutenant, the reaver lieutenant, is going to charge the unit of guardsmen uh, with, a, with an eight. And I would like to wrap around. Yep. Come and get it. The librarian is going to charge into them as well. Okay. Yeah, that's everything, I guess. So we'll start with the librarian on threes. Threes. Uh, so three wounds at AP minus three. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant in reaver armor, twos. All of them hit on threes. Five up. Close. Oh, that was close. So close. That was close. I'm not confident this thing lives Nine. in general, even with the, just three of them, so. Nine, 12, and then the mustache gets an attack as well. And those Bulgren have killed another ATV. That is really unfortunate. Uh, so the captain over there, this is gonna try and stab the tank. So on, uh, on twos, fives, four damage. Okay, uh, so he's gonna go from eight wounds down to four. Not the best turn for Steve here. The guard is starting to grind him down a bit. He does score three more for engage, as well as 15 primary to take him to 36, but with only one command point, what tricks does he have left? 10 primary points to start turn three and a command point to see her at seven. Okay, so these guys are good. My Bulgren are gonna 
move towards these guys, these uh, blob of intercessors that you have here, and we'll see what we can do. So let's start with some stuff. Um, I'm going to start with this sentinel. Do these intercessors. Here we go. The number of shots, five. Oh, baby. Threes. Oh, no. Uh, death to one of the intercessors. My Gatling turret is going to go into those guys. And then these heavy flamers. So I'll do the flamers first. Three. Oops. Sounds good. So he's in cover, so twos down to yeah. threes. He takes one wound. Okay. And then this twice into the intercessors in the middle. 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, minus nothing. 17 wounds? Yeah. On threes! I mean, that's a lot of saves, dude. Dude, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Look at all the saves versus the Punisher. Punisher? It's more like the Tickler tank. The year of Steve. <laughs> Okay, well, my basilisk is going to dump everything into... The captain standing yeah, on that objective? Your Mr. Fancy Pants dancing man? Yep. <laughs> no, he takes like six and dies. <laughs> yes, give me the pleasure. Oh, finally, the captain goes down. That took way too much. Impulsor. Yeah. Everything ends I with know, ore. I don't know, I know the names. Two heavy flamers. Here we go. Five. Four. I failed two. And I'm going to dump everything from that heck hound uh, into the closest unit. Take Get one. Wound. Get out of here. Okay, well, my heavy flamer is going to go into them too. For six. Fail one. One guy down. I'm, go I'm gonna charge your Reaver with my company commander. I can't even believe I'm saying this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him go. Uh, and the Bulgrins are also gonna charge. Their objective yeah. secured as well. Yeah, so these two characters heroically intervene. The Reaver Lieutenant goes and connects. And then the uh, Phobos Librarian goes and connects. This commander has officially gotten too much attitude. Bulgren charging again here. Steve is in trouble. They are brutally effective in combat, to be sure. Yeah, spending a command point on transhuman physiology to try to make Tanya's life a little harder, and it works. The Primaris Marines are weathering that storm of Bulgren flesh. So, I am going to have four attacks from my company commander. They're all going into this Reaver. Yep. Ah! Tanya drops a command point and a reroll to take her to six. For it. Yeah. Can yeah. I touch your dice and just transfer my bad juju into them? Yeah, by all yeah. means, if okay. you want to. Yeah, sure. I have to put my bad juju into his dice, and he was so kind as to let me. Like, that was your first mistake, dude. You never let somebody touch your dice. Fail him. There you go. <laughs> then we go to all the fight backs, right? Because all your fighting is done. Okay. So uh, we're going to start with the librarian. I'm super stoked for this. Yep. Oh my. The librarian hits on trees. So it's, it's a happening. bunch of misses. It's nope. Doesn't wound him. <laughs> oh, you got some. You got some. Okay. This is good. Okay. okay, five wounds, AP nothing. Okay, so five up. Uh, two go through. He's got one left. Never let anybody touch your dice. I thought it didn't matter. It does. <laughs> oh my! This will be the one. This will be the one. Four I wins? can't kill him anyways. Just double, double check. I don't even checking. wound him. No! <laughs> yes! Why? The times have turned. No. Yeah, he needs a name now. <laughs> Commander Kevin. Commander Kevin. We salute you, Commander Kevin. <laughs> Damn it. That's not how I imagined that going. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, so, over mm -hmm. here, the intercessors, we're going to go. So, 
<laughs> okay, so three hits with a power fist. Okay. Into the Bulgrin. Nope. Takes it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. How much damage? Two, two damage. Two damage, he's got one left. Okay, and then the attacks from the regular intercessors. Here we go on five. Four up. No, so one is dead. Okie dokie. Well then, to turn four. Scoring at the end of three, and three more for engaged all fronts, as well as another banner point, and ten primary brings Tanya up to 28 points to Steve's 36. Super tight score here to be sure. on primary and back up to a single command point for Steve and he needs to get some of these assets into the fight. Tanya's really boxed him out well here. We're gonna go to the psychic phase. I'm gonna try and ice cap the Might. D3 mortals. Three mortals. <laughs> Casting shrouding again on that reaver and it fails. Oh no! He's spending his only command point to re-roll it, and it fails again! No! Oh, yes! <sighs> oh, if that Reaver dies, he has lost the ability to deploy Scramblers in his opponent's zone, and that is a massive 10 points that he really needs. He's gonna huck a crack grenade into the oh, Sentinel, sure. and then the other one is going to shoot his bolt gun into the Sentinel, so crack grenade. He would. Hits, I would. Threes! Five up. Yeah. Oh, baby! The Sentinel also needs a name. Bolt gun. Oh, a bunch of hits. No wounds. Oh, no. It's all crumbling. Yep. This unit of intercessors is going to mm -hmm. shoot everything into the heck hound. One goes through. Uh, these guys, so the, the intercessors locked in combat are going to pistol the Bulgrins. Uh, one hit. So I will do the slab shield. So two up. Oh, it's minus oh, one. Oh, he takes yeah, it anyway. He takes it anyways. Is that one damage? Yeah. The Impulsor is gonna throw his Storm Bolters and his Storm Talon Array into the Heck Hound. Okay. Storm Bolters. Three up. Come on. No, one. Here we go. Ooh, Hellhound's taking some fire here, but it stays in the game. Damn it. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm gonna take uh, the projector, I'm gonna fire everything into the Sentinel. I'm the overcharging Sentinel. it, I wanna kill it. One shot. And I wound myself. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, 10 shots with the assault. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Why? <laughs> what did I do? I was so nice to you. <laughs> Oh man, no, oh, it's only one wound <laughs> and AP nothing. <laughs> nothing no. No, he takes one. Oh, he takes one. Is it just one damage? Yeah. Okay. Then cool. the rocket pod. Oh, it hits though. Strike seven. I wound you. Five up. He's good. No. <laughs> Don't let this happen to me. Five on fours. Fives. Okay. Uh, two go through. Okay, he's got two wounds left. The intercessors could probably pull it off. Looks like Steve's onto his charge phase here, and he's declared the Redemptor charging the Punisher. And here comes some classic guard command point spending. Overwatch and defensive gunners. That's gonna cost two command points, but hitting on fives with a 20-shot Punisher cannon is pretty good. It takes her to four command points, but absolutely well worth it. Whoa. So I'm gonna start with the heavy flamers. I know. So I need yeah. fives. Fours. Three of them go through. So I have nine wounds remaining now. <laughs> on threes. Oh, uh, five more. Oh. Well, I failed three of them. Oof! Between the Flamers and the Punisher, the Redemptor has taken six wounds from Overwatch. Uh, which means I am bracketed. I'm in my middle bracket. All right. Now I need an eight. And it fails to charge! Oh no! Oh, if we'd not spent that command point on the Reaver earlier, he might have been able to re-roll that. Just wow! These two intercessors are gonna charge the sentinel. I'm gonna charge them too with the other squad of intercessors. For an eight, of course. The damn impulsor goes into the to the heck hound. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna start, because you have four CP left, I'm gonna start with the charging intercessors. Okay. Okay, on threes. One wound at AP minus four, because I am in the assault doctrine. So two goes down to six, six up. You make it? No! So those intercessors, I'm gonna take this power fist and see if this works. <laughs> On fours. Two hits, okay. 
one wound at AP minus four. Don't kill me. Give me, like give this. me Nikki the Anderson. strength that I need. Explosion! Alas, poor Sentinel, you did your job well. Can we get an F in the chat for the Sentinel? Okay, so we're going into them. One guy dies, all right. It's all good. It's all good. It's all Everything good. is totally under control. Steve gets a point for bring it down for killing that Sentinel and two for engage in all fronts to bring him up to 54 halfway through four. Only five for primary for the War Mistress, but she's in a really good spot here. Five command points now and it's time to spend them. It looks like her movement phase is really about setting up a 15 point primary next turn. Remember, player two scores at the bottom of the turn. Time for Shushting, and the Basilisk is calling Aerial Spotters to reroll all misses here and has landed six hits on that reaver. So my tank commander is going to shoot everything and overcharge into this unit. Ooh. Well, the Intercessor's down, and so is the Reaver, and that means there is no chance of deploy scramblers for Steve. I'm gonna put the Gatling Cannon into the Reaver Lieutenant, and I'm gonna put the Heavy Flamers into the Librarian. Tanya looks to be tying up Steve's models to limit where the Redemptor can go and take away that objective, because her tanks have objective secured in an armored spearhead. Go, go, Guardsman! Smart play, that. <laughs> On sixes, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> On five. Oh! <laughs> what is this? End of four, and yes, I called it. This is a real barn burner. Steve's got 54, but Tanya has scored two more for engage, another banner, and three for grind them down, with five primary for 39. But she scores her primaries in the bottom of five. 15 is almost assured for her. Can Steve hold on? Maxes out his primary here with only another five points and needs to rack up some bring it down points. He's also spending his just gained command point on Wisdom of the Ancients on the Redemptor Dread to reroll ones in shooting. And then for shooting, uh, all of its guns are going to go into the Lehman Russ. Impulsor is going to fire all of its weapons into the, the Heckhound at no detriment. One at AP minus one, please. Oh, four up. Oh. oh! Now we can test the objective. Feels good. Finally, we'll go to my charges. That Dreadnought charges at Lehman Russ. I'm gonna Overwatch. Again. Yeah. Overwatch and defensive gunners again as the Redemptor declares a charge on the Punisher and said, boom! Oh my god! So I'm deciding to charge again. And then the Redemptor died. Funny enough, the Redemptor was never actually shot at. It was just overwatched to death twice. So, that happened. There goes the Redemptor, oh my so. goodness, killed in two turns of overwatch. Looks like they're doing the math here and Tanya is gonna score 15 primary. She's gonna score two more raised banners, one more for the turn and one for the end game. Three more for grind them down and two for engage on all fronts, but that last vehicle kill from Steve is actually going to be the difference. Oh, the so broken. So no, oh. it's, it's happening. It's the year, it's Steve. Happening. It's, happening. It's, happening. it's the year, Steve. Your final score, all total, is 73 to 71 for your victor and his first official win, Space Marine Steve. What a fantastically close game. Thank you to Steve and to Tanya the War Mistress for a fantastically entertaining game and to our episode sponsor, Vanguard Tactics. If you're looking to up your game of 40K, be sure to look them up. That's it for us here, folks. On behalf of all of us here at Play On, this is JT McDowell saying, until the next time you see us in the grim dark universe of the far flung future, play on. Oh, it feels so good. It we haven't watched this. <laughs>